The Bible describes the worst time in all of human history as the Great Tribulation. It says this will come just before Jesus returns. So what is the Great Tribulation, and why will it occur? Let's find out what the Bible has to say. We'll explain the Great Tribulation in four simple points. And if you happen to live in the United States or a British Commonwealth nation, be sure to stick around for point number four because it will impact you most of all. And please don't just believe us, but prove this for yourself and look up these verses in your own Bible. Okay, let's get started. Point number one, the Great Tribulation is a unique time period in all of human history. Jesus said, for then there will be great tribulation, or in other words, great distress and anguish, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. The book of Daniel also prophesies, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And the prophet Jeremiah says, for that day is great so that none is like it. These verses and others describe a unique time period far worse than any other in all of human history. There cannot be more than one time period that fits this description. So we know that these prophecies are referring to the same event, the coming great tribulation and the end of the age. Despite all of the past world wars, genocides, mass murders, pandemics, plagues, famines, natural disasters, and even the worldwide flood of Noah's day, none of these match the chaos, death, destruction, and suffering that will occur at this time. It will unleash the worst time period mankind has ever and will ever experience. Billions of people will die and many will suffer. Truly, it is a terrifying reality that must be taken seriously. As Jesus said, unless God intervenes, not a single person on earth would survive. This is where our world is headed. Point number two, the Great Tribulation is a period of two and a half years. The prophet Daniel was told that the final events leading up to the second coming of Christ and the setting up of God's kingdom on earth would last for a time, times, and half a time. Many biblical scholars agree that a time refers to one year, times refers to two years, and a half a time is half of a year, a total of three and a half years. Jesus said, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. This shows that at a point during this three and a half year period, yet after the tribulation, come these heavenly signs. Jesus' description in Matthew matches the sequence of end-time events in the book of Revelation. After the fifth seal is opened and the martyrdom of the saints, comes the opening of the sixth seal, where the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth. And Joel chapter 2 makes clear that these heavenly signs introduce the time period spoken of in the Bible as the day of the Lord. Joel 2, 30-31 says, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. More than 30 prophecies in the Bible refer to the day of the Lord. Isaiah 34 verse eight and 63 verse four show that the day of the Lord in end time prophecy is a period of one year. It is also called the year of recompense and the year of my redeemed. Therefore, the final year preceding the return of Christ is the time period in Bible prophecy known as the Day of the Lord. Introducing this year-long period are the heavenly signs, and the two and a half years leading up to the heavenly signs is the time of the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation will last for two and a half years and will begin right around three and a half years before Jesus returns to earth to establish the world ruling government of God. Point number three. The Great Tribulation includes severe persecution of true Christians. During this time, all nations will turn against the true Church of God and the saints of God because of what they preach and because of their obedience to God's commandments. At the end of the age, Satan, the great dragon, makes war in heaven and is cast to the earth. He comes down having great wrath because he knows that his time is short. He then persecutes the church, described symbolically as the woman who gave birth to the male child. After the woman flees to a place of safety in the wilderness, the dragon was enraged, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is describing an intense, sustained attack perpetrated by Satan the devil against the saints of God. 
God will take some of his people to a place of safety in the wilderness, but he will also allow some of his people to go through the Great Tribulation. Once Satan realizes he cannot get to those who are protected, he will use the end time beast power and false prophet to make war with the rest of God's people. This corresponds with details in the book of Daniel. Daniel's vision in chapter 7 describes a little horn, which is understood to be a prominent religious figure who will influence the end time beast power. It says that he will make war against the saints and prevail against them. This little horn will speak pompous words against the Most High, and he will persecute the saints of the Most High. Yes, some Christians will be given into his hand to become purified by suffering horrific tribulation and martyrdom. And speaking of the end time geopolitical beast power, Revelation 13 verse 7 says, It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. This martyrdom of saints is portrayed by the opening of the fifth seal of Revelation, which occurs before the heavenly signs and day of the Lord as we just saw. The Bible shows that this present society around us will become increasingly hostile to God's people and the moral standards they live by. Jesus said, They will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. The political, business, media, cultural, and religious elites will feel condemned by the true church of God which will not compromise regarding the truth of God's word. God's church will be politically incorrect. This world will feel guilty. Because of this and because of Satan's influence, they will hate God's people and severely persecute them in the last days before Jesus returns. Point number four. The Great Tribulation will be especially severe for the modern day descendants of Jacob. The prophecy recorded in Jeremiah 30 adds this important detail. For that day is great, so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble. During the Great Tribulation, the modern day descendants of Jacob will be severely punished. The patriarch Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, had 12 sons. These 12 sons became the progenitors of the 12 tribes of ancient Israel. Many today think 10 of these tribes have been lost. However, the Bible and traces of historical evidence reveal a very different story. To learn more about the modern day descendants of Jacob, order a free copy of our study guide, The United States and Great Britain in Prophecy, by clicking here. And if you would like us to make a video covering this topic, let us know in the comments below. Today, the descendants of Jacob are primarily the peoples of the United States and the British descended Commonwealth nations. This unprecedented time of trouble and suffering will be directed primarily against them, though other modern day descendants of Israel will also be punished. It is because the American and British descended peoples have been recipients of God's tremendous birthright promises as the descendants of the patriarch Joseph. The Bible shows that there are coming on the English speaking peoples, the modern day house of Israel, problems that we can scarcely imagine. God declares that he will cut off food and water supplies. He speaks of a time when cities will be laid waste and the land left desolate. There will be massive droughts and crop failures. These people will face plagues, disease, and mental torment. And eventually the English speaking peoples will be overrun, enslaved, and deported from their own lands. Two thirds of modern Jacob will die from pestilence, famine, and war. One third will be taken into captivity throughout the north, the south, and the east. The sword will be drawn after them and barely 10% will survive. The Great Tribulation will be a horrific time period impacting all nations. Jesus said these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. He said there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people, and that this will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth but it will be especially traumatic for the house of Jacob because it is the time of Jacob's trouble. If the United States, Great Britain, and the English-speaking peoples of the world do not turn away from their sins, this unique time of calamity and suffering will overtake them in the not too distant future. As the prophet Jeremiah proclaimed, For thus says the Lord, Your affliction is incurable, your wound is severe. For I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, because of the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins have increased, I have done these things to you. The Great Tribulation is a coming reality that no one will be able to hide from when it hits. Christians are told to watch and pray, but so many people will be taken by surprise, and so many will lose their life. What is ahead is a terribly painful and sorrowful experience for mankind, and all of it is ultimately the result of mankind's disobedience to his Creator. The good news, though, is that when Jesus does return, he will put an end to the violence and misery. 
He will bring Jacob back from captivity. He will heal them, and he will cause them to once again dwell safely in a prosperous and good land. When Jesus returns to reign over the earth, then the whole world will finally experience true peace and righteousness like never before. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. If you enjoyed this video, please like, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel for more videos on Bible topics. And if you don't like it, let us know why. Now watch this video to see a more detailed timeline of the end time events described in the book of Revelation.